catching many out there in the market by surprise. Why did the board and Mr McDermott decide that now was the right time to embark on a change of leadership? So Bill's contract was up for renewal in January, and Bill has had um, going on an almost a 10-year really successful run. And as he reflected, he thought about the timing, he thought about the strength of the company now, and rather than thinking about handing over the reins and kind of going through a transition at the beginning of the year, which is really our most busy and active time setting the strategy and getting the new year in motion, he felt now was the appropriate time to come out. We had a great strong quarter. Um, he had a, a very strong succession plan in place and worked closely with us to make that happen. He's excited about his next journey. He's doing great. He's full of his usual energy and we look forward to continuing to work with him throughout the rest of the year. Okay, how will your leadership differ from your predecessors? Uh, Christian, if I'll throw that one at you. I mean, as you already mentioned, uh, SAP delivered another fantastic quarter. Uh, we just announced our preliminary results for Q3. Externally strong on the top as well as on the bottom line. So Jennifer and I will, of course, continue the very successful path, what Bill as the CEO already outlined and of course now we are heading into Q4 this is where all of our focus will now weigh in and of course then in the weeks to come Jennifer and I will of course also share more more plans about how we are heading SAP into the future. You mentioned the strong results of course we did see uh, a big contribution from your shift towards uh, the cloud landscape as well. Is that going to be the biggest dro growth driver going forward and how are you going to drive growth in that p particularly competitive sector? Yeah, it's absolutely our growth driver. We're excited. You know, Christian and I, we have such a strong engineering culture at SAP. And with many of the cloud companies we've acquired, bringing that great cloud DNA into our company combined with the incredible engineering culture we have. We're excited about new innovations. We're excited about doing new things, bringing this tapestry of talent together. We really want to keep that engineering culture front and center, and we're really excited for what's ahead. Yeah. Christian, do you want to touch on that as well? I mean, when you look at our numbers, actually, you really see that the strategy works out beautifully. So first of all, we delivered strong growth in the core as well as in the cloud. So you see that by giving our customers choice to run their solutions on-prem as well as in the cloud, it's really beautiful paying off. And this is definitely also the path we want to now continue in the quarters to come. There's been some criticism over the past few years of the strategy of your predecessor, the acquisitive strategy, number of significant acquisitions that were made under Mr McDermott, uh, and that now the company is particularly complex. Will some of your job be over the next little while, I guess, unwinding some of those complexities that have now been seen as a result of uh, the number of acquisitions that the company's made over the last few years? We're really excited. The acquisitions that we've made, most recently Qualtrics, the growth has been fantastic. Um, all of these solutions have been very additive to our strategy, and they're going to continue to fuel our growth. Going forward, I think Christian and I are really focused on customer success and making sure experience is front and center for our customers and what they experience from SAP. We're going to be focused on our customers. Absolutely, simplification is, in this economy, really critical, especially in technology. And uh, we're excited about new innovation. Yeah. And as Chen said, I mean, uh, both organic growth with innovations coming out of SAP, plus our recent acquisitions, which we both take together and build the intelligent enterprise for our customers, that's our winning strategy. Let's talk about the global economy then. You are, of course, a global player, but you have your roots in Germany. Which part of the world economy worries you the most as you now move into the C-suite and take up the roles as co-CEO? Do you see a European recession, of course, Europe looking particularly vulnerable, or a recession in the United States? I mean, first of all, when you, when you look at our numbers, and we will share more details in, in the next week, you will see a really decent growth across all geographies. And SAP is doing really well 
both in North America as well as in Europe, and of course, uh, high growth also in Asia. So we are actually very confident also for the quarters to come. We see an extre extre extremely strong pipeline in all geographies, and we don't see any downturn in, in, in one of our geographies. Are you worried, though, about what's on the economic horizon, given the fact that we've got this trade war between China and the United States? Of course, we know that the president uh, will be meeting uh, in the, uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday afternoon, so in a few hours' time, uh, with Chinese officials to try and end the impasse. But technology has been uh, really caught up in this trade war, this ongoing trade war between China and the United States. Does that worry you being uh, a technology based business and what would your message to the president be uh, about the trade war and of course the fact that it's now gone on for about 18 months? Yeah. I'll stay out of the politics but, uh, but I am, uh, I'm really excited about the fact that we have a global business. We're in 190 countries uh, around the world and it gives us balance. And to be able to really have so many different customers that we can work with, we are able to really understand what's going on, to hear from them, understand what's most important. But the one constant in a time of uncertainty is technology. Every business themselves are becoming a technology company. And this has been, been very important for our growth and it will continue to be so. We remain optimistic. Q4 is our biggest quarter. We have, uh, we, we got a lot of work to do. We've got a team that's really excited. We have great momentum coming out of the third quarter. We look forward to finishing the year strong. Yeah, and, and with regard to the geos, I mean, US is definitely our biggest market unit, while we're also, of course, developing you know, software for China, out of China. So also with regard to these two countries, we feel extremely confident also for the quarters to come. How helpful is it, though, when you have the president and the administration putting companies in China on a blacklist, refusing to do business with uh, global tech giants uh, out here in the Asian region, in China, like Huawei. That's certainly got to make life a little bit more difficult for you managing a global uh, tech company. I mean, definitely it makes the business not easier. But uh, as I already mentioned, I mean, we do a lot of business out of China for China. So we are really not, you know, uh, only, you know, now dependent on one country. And as Chen already mentioned, we are doing business in over 190 countries. We have a strong development base across all regions of the world. So uh, we can serve all of our customers at a global scale also going forward, uh, independent of what the political situation is. Final question uh, to both of you. What will be your message now to your, to your shareholders as you take the reins? I know that activist investor Elliott Management's on your share register with a $1.35 billion stake and has been uh, saying a few things over the last little while about the strategy of the company. But uh, Jennifer, if I'll start with you. What's your message to your shareholders uh, now as you become the co-CEO? We have almost half a million customers. Our focus on, is on making those customers successful with business outcomes using our software. Happy customers leads to more revenue. We're focused on innovation. Innovation is going to be really critical for us as we move into the cloud. And we're focused on continuing to build a great culture. It's a war for talent. Culture is a differentiator. And we're really excited and proud of the talent and the culture we have at SAP. Yes, and from my side, I mean, Elliot is a very important investor, as we have many other important investors of SAP. And for us, it's as we have seen now in Q3, it's all about to continue the successful path of SAP and deliver you know, another strong quarters now in the, in the upcoming years. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.